Hi, I'm Abby Glassenberg. And I'm Danielle Spurge. And we decided to do a little video today to have a discussion about Etsy's new e-commerce option called Pattern. So um, what we're going to do is answer a few questions and kind of talk back and forth. We haven't discussed our feelings about Pattern yet with one another. So we'll be just talking back and forth a little bit about it. Um, we're going to talk about um, what it is and how much it costs and um, sort of how it works overall. And we're going to look at my shop and another sample shop as well. And then we're going to talk about what we feel is motivating Etsy to add this feature, um, what some of the advantages might be for sellers, and what some of the disadvantages or risks might be in using Pattern. Um, as, a, as an e-commerce option. And then uh, we're gonna compare it a little bit with um, some other e-commerce options that are out there and see sort of what this offers versus what they offer. Um, we'll talk about what kind of seller pattern might be best for and maybe what kind of seller it's not best for. Um, and then uh, maybe suggest some features or things that Etsy might do to enhance pattern since it's brand new, just launched yesterday as we're talking, so um, some things that they might do over time that we feel would enhance it and make it better serve sellers. So we're excited to get started. Um, and so Danielle, do you want to kick us off a little bit and just talk about what is pattern? Like if somebody said to you, okay, you know, what, what is this? I, you know, people on Facebook are all talking about it. So what is your answer? What is pattern? So pattern is a way to create your own website um, via Etsy, basically an Etsy powered e-commerce shop builder. Um, and it's like a one click situation. So if you have a shop on Etsy, it basically gives you the option to just click one or two buttons and then you have your own website um, and you can connect a custom domain to it. There's a few different templates you can choose from. And it basically um, just takes all your Etsy listings and puts them into a new format that you can put your own domain on and design it a little bit to match your brand. So it's super easy, which I think is probably the hugest benefit. <laughs> and it costs $15 a month um, after a 30 day free trial. And it comes together on the back end with your Etsy shop. So it manages inventory and you can do all your like back-end stuff, sort of managing two shops from the same place. Right, exactly. And there's still that 3.5% listing uh, transaction fee. There's no additional listing fee because you're going to be listing items in your actual Etsy shop. Um, right. so that's, that's that 20 cent listing fees that one time for both pattern and your Etsy shop. But if something sells in your pattern shop, there is still that 3.5% transaction fee. And you have to have direct checkout enabled on your Etsy shop in order for Pattern to work. Um, so there is no, as far as I understand it, there's no option to use PayPal within Pattern. Is that right? Do you know about that? Um, I think that people can use PayPal, but it comes the same way on regular Etsy where you can use, you can select PayPal as an option and it goes to like Etsy's grand PayPal and then they pay out to sellers depending on the seller's settings. Okay. Back in the day, like last year, you could have separate PayPal, but then they integrated them. But Together. Okay. Right. right. So direct yes, checkout, okay. direct uh, checkout is part of this though. Like I think if you don't yes. have direct checkout enabled at all in your shop, I don't think you can do this. Yeah. My understanding is that the checkout process is basically exactly the same as it is on regular Etsy. Okay. Okay. And you All do right. pay that 3.5% commission to Etsy and the direct checkout processing fee. Right, exactly. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what pattern looks like now that we've yeah. talked about it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, okay. And one second here. What I wanted to show you is Pattern by Etsy. Oh, sorry. Um, hmm, I just did have it up four seconds ago, but um, let's see. Hang on one sec. Where did it go? Okay, so I was going to start by showing you my own, but we'll start by showing you somebody else's. So this is a sample shop. It's called the Paris Print Shop. This is one of the ones that Etsy um, 
probably handpicked to sort of test out how a pattern would work. Um, and so you can see the categories on the top, all items, and then all the different categories that she has. And then as you hover over each item, um, you can see the just like a little title for it and how much it costs. So if we click on this Paris journal, um, you can see it looks really different from Etsy. We don't have all of the um, uh, reviews on the side and all the sidebar stuff that Etsy has. We have a really different layout that looks more kind of contemporary in the way that a regular e-commerce shop looks. Um, and uh, this is somewhat customizable. You can change the fonts and the colors to a degree. Um, you can select from among five themes. So that's what one shop looks like. And as we go down to the bottom, you'll see, um, if I move this up a little bit, you can see it still says toward the bottom here, powered by Etsy. So that's important to know, but the URL is the Paris print shop. So you can have your own URL pointed there. And I think Etsy is selling URLs, it seems like, for $16 a year. Unless I'm wrong, I think that's, that's what I um, have learned. So, and then here's a different theme. This is um, Andrea Vida, who's an off awesome softy maker. And you can see she's selected kind of a different theme where she has um, more of kind of her about page photos um, up here that you can scroll through and then you come down and her shop looks different. It's got more, uh, you know, two side-by-side -side photos. Again, still powered by Etsy at the bottom. Um, and then you can click on an item and you see this on the side where you can select options and then her photos go down. So there's somewhat, you know, different themes that you can pick to make it look your own way. And it definitely doesn't look like Etsy. Right. Um, so anything else you wanted to point out about these either the Paris print shop or um, Andrea Vita's shop before we click back. I think it's nice that there are options and like to a certain extent they are customizable. Um, but I, I'm just not very impressed, honestly. <laughs> okay, so let me unshare. So you guys can go and take a look at that. That's just, um, there's a few um, shops you can look at if you don't wanna, you know. But if you, if you click sort of, before you even start the free trial, it'll, it'll just sort of auto-populate your own shop so you can see what it looks like, which I did. No, I was going to do, but I lost it. But um, it's easy for, for you to do and kind of just see real quick what your shop would look like without, you know, committing to anything. Um, yeah. And right. there is that free trial if you did want to try it out. Check it out and just see you're not, nothing's going to um, harm you to do that. So, um, so let's just start off by thinking about motivation. Um, because, you know, Etsy's a public company now. It's a big company. It's 10 years old, and they um, definitely need to have some revenue model that's going to work for them. So, um, in your opinion, what do you think is behind this? Sort of, it seemed sort of dropped from the sky <laughs> yesterday. I mean, to most of us. What do you think is the motivation? Well, it's, it's obviously, it's clear to me why Etsy's doing it, because it's, Certainly, if it entices people to start their free trial and start a plan, it entices them to stay on Etsy because the two are linked together. And I don't believe that you can have a pattern site where you even just add things only to pattern that are not on Etsy. Yes. So you have to have Etsy in order to use this. <laughs> so it keeps people's interest going in Etsy. Um, and because it is so simple to start and maintain like the barrier is incredibly low so if people feel intimidated by um starting their own e-commerce site this is probably a great solution for a lot of people who just want to you know quickly put something up and it's easy and they don't have to manage inventory in two places and all this stuff so i see why it's it's good for etsy and i i get why they did it and I think, you know, Chad, I was reading Chad Dickerson, who's the CEO of Etsy. He had an email yesterday that he sent out and, and I just wanted to point out what he said in it because I think it's kind of telling. So he said pattern joins three existing services, direct checkout, right? Promoted listings and shipping labels. And so those are their three, what they consider seller services. And so pattern is like the fourth seller service. And then this is a quote from him. He said, this is from Chad. We introduced our first seller service in 2011 and in less than five years have successfully built a revenue stream 
that, count, that accounted for nearly half of our revenue in 2015, with approximately 48% of our active sellers using at least one service during the year. So half of Etsy's revenue is coming from transaction fees and listing fees, right? Which is what uh, a big part of Etsy, but the other half um, is coming from seller services. Yeah. So that's promoted listings, direct checkout, and shipping labels. So the goal here by adding pattern, which is $15 a month, plus these domain names that you're going to be, a domain name you're going to be purchasing, um, is to increase that um, percentage, I would guess, right? So to go from 48% of revenue coming from seller services to whatever their new revenue goal is. Right. Um, so I, you know, I think that he's been upfront about that and I, there's no um, conspiracy here behind it. It's a business and that's part of their model. So this is, yeah. um, this is the first sort of service you can pay for that's significant like that. It's, it's quite right. Different. Yeah, I don't have a problem with Etsy, like offering services that, you know, some sellers will really find beneficial. I mean, all of us love shipping labels. That's love awesome them. that we have Etsy shipping labels. Um, I've never used the promoted listings, but some people like that too. I mean, the services are, they're not like stupid, they're relevant. Um, so I don't have a problem with them like making money on services. And I think that some, like I've heard some rumblings about people being like, oh, Etsy doesn't even make any money on transaction fees. To me, that means that most sellers don't know how to make sales. That doesn't mean Etsy's doing anything wrong. <laughs> um, that means people are just not sure how to use Etsy to make sales. So, or the vast majority at least then. Um, but I'm, I'm fine with Etsy trying to make money. I understand that they're a business. And this service is good for some people. Exactly. So let's get into that now. So let's talk about, um, I think we, we kind of, you went over some of the advantages that it has, that Pattern has, the ease of use, um, the instantaneous e-commerce, managing inventory in both places. Um, mm -hmm. And are there any other sort of advantages or things that you think are important to highlight for people? Um, I think the, the domain, you know, that you can get it. Although if you wanted to, you could have a domain. And if you don't have another website, you should have your own domain and point it to Etsy anyway um, at this point. But okay, so it helps you do that if you don't have that. Yeah, I, when I was identifying pros and cons, I had like one pro of a bunch of cons and then a lot of stuff that was like neutral where it was just like so standard that any site you had would have these things. So I didn't feel like they were pros, like any better than another service. They just were part of, of course you would have these things. So to me, the biggest pro, um, based on what I hear people tell me is their biggest hesitation in starting a second site is the inventory management. To me, I'm like, I think once you're actually doing it, you kind of realize like unless both of your shops are getting insane, crazy traffic all day, every day, it's pretty easy to manage inventory in two places. So I think for the vast majority of people, it's not really as big of a problem as they think it would be. I understand for like vintage sellers or something like that where every item is one of a kind or something, that's probably a bigger concern. But I identified the inventory um, reconciling as the biggest pro based on what I hear people tell me is their main concern. Um, but I'm also saying that I don't think it's as big of a deal as people think it is. Right. And I think, um, I mean, I think it looks professional to a certain degree. Like it looks nice. It does. You know, they it are, they are really nice. nice. Layouts. Um, maybe some, you know, you might look at somebody's shop and feel like, gosh, I wish I had a nice shop like that. Well, this will create that nice look for you without you yes. having to do very much. It's very, it's got Etsy's, um, you know, they do a very good job at making it easy. They did. Very they easy did. for sellers to, you know, they do a lot of like user testing and that sort of thing. So it's very smooth. It's quick and easy, intuitive. You click here. Oh, very easy to change the theme and all of that. So, and yeah. change the font and the colors, super simple. Very simple. So and has that. It, the fact that you could do this in like maybe 10 minutes is pretty, pretty awesome. 
I'll give yeah. them that. <laughs> okay, so those are those are some advantages. So um, let's talk a little bit about risks and about some of the things that we see as maybe not an advantage of choosing to use pattern versus choosing to use a different e-commerce option. So kick us off with a, a con or a risk or a few, whatever you want. Well, I think like a lot of times um, people, people want to be like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And I think that that's valid. Um, and I do always encourage people to use Etsy as a tool to build something else. So the something else would be your business as a whole. Etsy can be a tool just like Facebook or Instagram is a tool that you use to build your business. You don't use Facebook. Like I don't want people to use Facebook and Instagram to build their Etsy. I want them to use Facebook, Instagram, and Etsy to build their business that exists off Etsy. So, you know, if Etsy tanks, <laughs> pattern is going to tank too and then your website goes goodbye. So I think that's a risk. I don't think that Etsy's at risk of tanking, but I don't know, <laughs> you know. Um, so I, I usually suggest that people have autonomy from Etsy to a certain extent, if that's what they want. Um, yeah, and I think kind of going with that idea, one of the reasons to set up, in my mind, your own e-commerce shop is to diversify, right? Yeah. And that's what you're talking about with risk, risk of Etsy tanking, risk of Etsy changing in some way that you can't control. Mm -hmm. That um, having your own shop and an Etsy shop, there's a diversification in there which reduce, but inherently reduces your risk because right. if one thing happens in one shop, like I've had times when my own shop has gone down. You know, I had a problem with the server, right. the traffic is down. Well, yeah. that's on Black Friday, I sell at Etsy. So it's okay. I'm still going to make sales. The customers are emailing me. Go to Etsy. It's all there, you know? Yeah. And so by having those two spots, you know, online, just like anything else is at risk of, you yeah. know, going down, having problems. So you want to diversify. Well, if you choose to have your e-commerce shop on pattern, you lose the diversification and that's a risk. Yeah. And you're also still dealing with like Etsy's, um, you know, their protocol for, customer service or, you know, returns, disputes, whatever, because they're handling the transaction. So you don't get as much, I mean, I know it doesn't come up a lot, but something to think about. Um, also their support system, you still using the same support that's offered through Etsy, which I think we can all agree is traditionally slow, which I understand, but if you, you know, want to consider it, it's something to consider. And there was, like you were saying, um, you know, sometimes things go down or they don't work or whatever. There was an issue last month where direct checkout didn't work for like three days. I remember that. Um, or it was like very strangely working for three days. It was like on and off. It was on the fritz. So stuff like that is still going to be the same across the board between Etsy and this site. So in that sense, I don't feel like it really is truly your own site. Um, or a different site in some way. Um, it's just kind of like, to me, it's like a second Etsy where you don't have competition on the front end. Like if you drive your own traffic, I was talking to a friend of mine who started the free trial. She was like, it's basically like if you drive your own traffic, you don't have all these competing links all over the place now um, on the front end, you know, it's just you, which is, that's true. That's a good, that's a big benefit. Um, but then if you're driving your own traffic, drive it to your own site. <laughs> like you're yes, because one of the problems that you have when you drive your own traffic, which you should be doing ultimately, because it's your business, as you mentioned, which was a really good point, um, is that right when the customer is ready to check out, there's a hurdle. And the hurdle is they have to have an Etsy account and they may not have known that because it doesn't look like Etsy. So right when they're at that last stage, when you want them to put in their credit card, you know, information and hit that they're going to buy it, um, then there's this hurdle where they're thrown into a new place and they have to um, sort of, you know, first of all, they're on Etsy now, so they could go off wandering to another shop. Um, and they also could be like, oh, well, I don't have an Etsy account. Now, in, in Etsy's email, they said, 
that that's actually reassuring to customers because they feel that it's safer to use Etsy for e-commerce versus using some fly-by-night artist who knows who she is and does she have like the real SSL certificate and, you know, credit card information? Is it being kept, you know, actually safe and all of those things, which are valid questions. And so somehow that, you know, but you can always use PayPal, who knows? But anyway, by, you know, using, uh, yeah, by, by using pattern, you're putting that hurdle right at, the, at that last and most important spot. And it's just seems kind of like confusing. I haven't seen it in action because I haven't tried to buy anything from an, a pattern shop. But I mean, obviously, I know that that's what would be coming. But it seems confusing. Like you said, one minute you're on somebody's personal website or so you think. And then at the very end, you're like, oh, now I'm on Etsy. And that, that kind of brings up another point like, well, two points, actually. Why are we paying an Etsy commission fee for tra traffic we drove ourselves? To our site like what did Etsy do to earn the commission fee on top of the $15 a month you're paying them and on my site I have this clever little thing that a lot of sites have called cart abandonment so I can follow up with people if they don't finish their purchase which I'm absolutely positive does not exist on pattern so right. there's a which, lot of like that brings me to a great, that's a great point which is that there's no third party apps there's no plugins Nothing. there's no ability to add an email newsletter sign up a pop-up customization when it comes to those sorts of things or don't exist and so yeah, no, no api right and, um you can't even probably i'm assuming i'm almost positive that you wouldn't be able to send a developer in there to tweak anything either you can't so. tweak the css you can't right. tweak the html it's locked and you you know as far as i can tell from now at least as it is at launch there's no way to install you know sumo me hello bar right. and none of those things that you get in a wordpress site or shopify or you know that you can add to make right. your shop function on a bit on the business side in the most optimal way right options now will they add them who knows we're judging this a day after launch yeah you know, as it is out of the box. It, you know as it stands at this moment right um, you don't gain a lot and, and around that 3.5 percent transaction fee one of the reasons that I personally feel very motivated to send traffic to my own shop i have a woocommerce shop on my wordpress site is because i have no fee and so um i use etsy really as um as like advertising essentially exactly. so i don't actually spend any money on advertising and i pay my etsy bill every month as my advertising bill because it's a way for its discovery that's the way yeah. I see Etsy, Etsy yeah. discovery. And so people find me who've never heard of me, never seen my things, they buy something, and then my goal is to get those people onto my email newsletter list so that the next purchase that they make from my shop will come from my WooCommerce shop where there is no fee and where they're in only my ecosystem. Yes, and that's, that's exactly what I always tell my students too, is like, use Etsy, to find to bring traffic to you organically from within Etsy um, because Etsy's getting a ton of traffic and then you can funnel that into you you know capture the audience convert them and then bring them over to your own world you and know? when it comes to craft there is no better discovery tool than Etsy and so right. I always feel like no matter how frustrated you might be or sort of disenchanted or whatever, to give up Etsy is a mistake. In my opinion, I, I feel very devoted to Etsy and very grateful to Etsy for that reason because they yeah. have created what I feel like is the world's best discovery tool for handmade stuff. And as a person who makes stuff, thank goodness, because um, without it, I mean, people would need to be dependent on on everything I'm doing, but I need, you know, but that alone, my Instagram, my stuff, you know, so. No, I totally agree. It's just this giant search system, basically. And if you can appeal to that and get found there, like that's to me, that's how Etsy earns its commission. So if I'm driving my own traffic, what did you do to help me? <laughs> like, I don't understand that part. So, I mean, I understand it from Etsy's perspective. Right. But they're already making it's not just the commission, it's then also the processing fee. 
And I know you would pay, you pay a processing fee anywhere. I pay it on Shopify. You pay it to wherever. So that is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But why are we paying a commission to Etsy? It doesn't boost anything. I saw somebody ask, does it boost your searchability in Etsy if you use this? I said, no. It's a no. And it also doesn't hurt it. So just be, right. you'll, you know, unlike um, they, they just recently released this new um, template for shop policies. And if you choose not, you, you have the choice to use it or not. And if you don't fill it out and use it as your shop policies, it does bump you down in search. And they were pretty clear about that. So being having your shop policies filled out on their template helps you in search. Now, choosing not to be part of pattern does not do that. In other words, it, it, they're saying that it has no effect on search. Yeah, we had in my course group, we had a pretty big discussion about this policy thing. And I know that's not what we're here to talk about, but there was a lot of what, what I call etsy explaining. <laughs> where it was not clear at all what they even meant by this because in one spot it said you know we want you to have policies and that will bump you up in the search and to me it read like kill two birds with one stone have policies get bumped up in search use this template and then in another place it said sellers who use our template will receive a boost of some kind but sellers who don't won't be penalized so it's like how can you be both Interesting. That's a little unfair. And I can send you, I like saved it. I'm like, what does this mean? <laughs> Why does it say this? And to me, I kept telling my students, I'm like, at a certain point, you have to decide. Do you want that slight potential boost that's part of another, it's part of the umbrella of like um, customer experience or whatever they call it. It's like three parts that make up that little boost and that's part of it. And I was like, do you want that slight potential boost or do you want to speak to your customers in your own language? If you can make the policy work for you, I say go for it. If you can't, don't worry about it. It's so right. slight. Like, in my understanding, it's a very slight. But, yeah, this pattern thing, no impact either way. So right. I'm and what sure. about SEO? I am not an SEO expert or even SEO hobbyist. I'm not, really not great on SEO. I know you're much you're, – you are an expert on SEO. Etsy SEO, um, but as far as like Google SEO is concerned, I know there's been some grumblings about whether having duplicate content. So you're going to have pattern, which is obviously um, it's basically a clone of your Etsy site in, a, right. in all the language, all the photos, everything's a clone. Yeah, and that when you have a clone like that, Google doesn't like it because you're publishing duplicate content, which to them makes it look like a, a trigger for a site being sort of poor quality. Yeah, like you know, kind of a thing a spammer might do. And so they bump that down in SEO. And um, so there's been worries that this could do that. I don't know if yeah. you know about that. I don't know too much about S, uh, Google SEO. And I'm, I know that it's always changing and they're always tweaking it or whatever. In my like imagination of common sense, it makes sense to me that why would they want you to have duplicate content? But beyond that, I don't know why you'd want to have duplicate content anyway. To me, the, the whole Etsy, like we were talking about, you want to be found on Etsy. So you put your shop together in such a way that you're more likely to get found on Etsy. I would never build my own site in the same way that I build my Etsy. So it just doesn't translate. That's a great Etsy point because you, right, like you help, you, I read or watched one of your videos and you were talking about Etsy SEO and how to use, for example, yeah. the title of right. your product. So if I have an owl sewing pattern, that the title should sort of be jam-packed with these keywords that match your tags and that sort of thing in order to be better found in Etsy search. But if you're then cloning that and putting it on pattern, it's going to look ridiculous because the title of the thing is like all these weird keywords that's not a sentence and not cohesive and not the way you would normally describe something. Yeah, and it doesn't, it just doesn't translate. Like, it's the same thing anywhere. Like, if you sell on Amazon, you build your shop to appeal to Amazon buyers and the Amazon experience and to look right in that, in that format. And same with Etsy. Like, everything should... And that's the way it should be. You tailor the experience to the, the platform. Um, and it's, I mean, the sample shops that they pulled, 
they didn't look ridiculous like that because their, you know, their titles weren't so long and whatever. But in general, it looks a little bit, if I did it, it would look ridiculous. <laughs> and then and you, can't change, you can't change, for example, on pattern right. to make the title look appropriate for, for a standalone e-commerce shop and then go back on Etsy and make it appropriate for Etsy SEO um, because right. it has to be the same. And that, I think, is actually a great point and maybe one that people haven't quite hit on yet um, as far as, like, in Facebook and everybody, you know, talking about this. So mm -hmm. I think that's a really, really good point. Is there anything else that you feel like um, people should know? Like, who is this – who do you feel like Pattern is great for? Like, when Etsy – I mean, Etsy put money and time and engineers' effort for probably six months to a year. I mean, this is a long project to create this. So they must have their ideal Etsy – customer, which is this, the seller community in mind, and think there's a large enough pool of people who are going to pony up $15 a month ongoing to get this going. So who are those people in their mind? Well, I think $15 a month is really affordable. Um, it's, it's about half of what I pay on the basic Shopify plan. I think it's like 30 bucks a month I pay to have like the first level Shopify, which is plenty really. Um, so I think it, meets people at their like lower like it's a lower budget solution to having your own site which is great um and it's easy like we talked about it's so easy um and it's good for people who don't want to mess with us with a new platform that they have to really like build it up like shopify which is what i use is very intuitive um but i have a lot of internet experience <laughs> like you know, I've used WordPress for a long time. It's very similar to that. I understand, like, generally, like, you know, the tech that is behind it, even though it is very simple. And I think if anybody can use Etsy, they can use Shopify. But it's, it's probably ideal for somebody who just doesn't want to spend a lot of time at all and just wants a really quick solution. It's easy. They don't have to deal with a second, like, Ross, uh, you know, like bookkeeping, whatever, accounting, transactions come from here, they come from there, it's all together. Um, so it's, for the person who just really just wants it to be super easy, this is probably as easy as it's ever gonna be. Um, but I don't know if that's the best, what's, what's easiest is maybe not the best long-term decision. I agree. I think that's a great way to put it. And yeah, I mean, I think you said it really well, it's easy. It's not the best. It's not really the best long term. Um, I don't think it ever will be because by its nature, it is Etsy. And so, yeah. as I said earlier, uh, what you end up having is you lack diversification. And so, in the end, it can never be the best option no matter what they add to it. Um, but it is a good option. And I think if you're starting, out or you're just the person who would prefer to not mess with things um, it's simple and there's something to be said for that and I think um, I think life is better with it than without it I mean I, I think we're it's better than action for yesterday or the day before when it wasn't it, it wasn't live um, right. because it's an option and options are good yeah that's yeah exactly just another option of the existing options and so I think people I've been telling people, like, you know, we all have the same problem where we want to have our own website, you know, in addition to Etsy, but we're not all going to have the same solution. If this is the solution for you, then rock on, because that's the, the best solution is the one that's going to make it easy for you to maintain it and stick with it and use it. And if that's this, then that's the, that's the, end, of the, that's the end of the road. This is what's going to work for you. And so it doesn't matter what I think or what anybody else thinks. Um, and so it is a good option for that. I was wondering too, um, how it would play out in the future. Like say you used Pattern for a year and then you were like, I really do want to move off Etsy. How would the like, all the good juju that came with like SEO on your Pattern site or backlinks to your Pattern site and that domain, like how would that transfer? I don't know. So. Something so I do wonder because your 
domain that you purchase, my understanding is that it ends up being a subdomain of pattern in a way, the same way that your Etsy shop is a subdomain of Etsy. Mm -hmm. And so when you move, if you can you point that domain that you're purchasing for $16 a year from Etsy to your own site and does that juice transfer? And I don't know. Yeah. That. I don't know. That's like beyond my. Me too. <laughs> that's not, that's above my pay grade. I don't right, know. Exactly. But if you're worried about it, it's worth thinking about. It's worth looking into. Yeah. Um, and also it might matter if you buy the domain on or off Etsy. I don't know. I don't know either. And, um, yes. Can you buy the domain off Etsy and have it be pointed to pattern? Good question. That I know you can because I know somebody who did it. Okay. Um, but what if you buy the domain on Pattern and then in a year from now you want to move it somewhere else? Do you, how do you renew it? Do you renew it with Etsy still, but you're somewhere else? I think probably just be like, I bought my domain on GoDaddy. And mm -hmm. so every year I just renew it on GoDaddy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So my guess is that it seems like just... Etsy's a domain broker now, which is new. <laughs> Right? I guess. I don't, I don't understand. Right. That's I don't know how any of that works. Me neither. So listeners, if you have insight into some of the things that we've been talking about, maybe you are the SEO expert or know a lot about domains or about anything else that we've talked about and have questions about, or you've tried out pattern and want to share your experience, we would love to hear your feedback and your thoughts. And we're all still learning together. So, um, you know, Danielle, where can we find you? And then I'll tell you where to find me and, and we'll keep the discussion going. So I'm at MerryweatherCouncil.com, which is a Shopify site. <laughs> <laughs> or MerryweatherCouncilBlog.com, which is a WordPress site. Excellent. And I'm at WalshyNaps.com, which is also a WordPress site. And on there, you'll find my WooCommerce shop as well. Um, but uh, but we would, we'll, we'll both be posting this video on our web, on our website. And so you can comment on either one and Danielle and I will um, look at comments from both and get back to you. So yeah. thank you so much. Thanks for thank coming. You. Yeah, it was fun. Thanks. All right, great. See you later.